Hey guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video as always and actually today's video is kind of special because it's a continuation of my last video which was where I started to go through the writing supplement for my Columbia University application which did ultimately get me accepted. Columbia was my dream school if you guys are new to this channel and I think that the writing supplement definitely had to play some part. I wasn't in the admissions room obviously but I did get accepted so I think it had to have some role and last video was getting really really long so I decided to actually cut it into two parts and save the rest of this for a new video. So last time I went over all the short essay and answer questions for the writing supplement and today I'm going over something that's pretty unique to Columbia. It's a pretty I would say significant part of their writing supplement. It's pretty iconic and it's all the lists that they have. So the lists of the books that you've read in the past year of the magazines and websites and print publications that you like to read, the exhibits and galleries and lectures that you've gone to, all these really cool cultural type things that Columbia really likes to see. So today I'm going to be going over my answers to those questions and why I think they were successful. And before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media. Also, you should definitely follow me on Quora. If you follow me anywhere, I would definitely recommend following me on Quora because I answer questions on there all the time. If you don't know, Quora is a social media where some people ask questions like you guys can ask any questions you might have about the college admissions process and then other people like me answer questions so if you guys do it ask a question on there who knows there just might be a chance that I would answer it so I'm just Crystal D. Christofalo on there you can find me really easily and then also I'm super excited because I just opened a Pinterest account I made an official Pinterest board for how to get into college so you should definitely follow me there as well like I said in part one of this video, these two videos that I'm making are the follow-ups to the video that I made before the very last one, which was on the entire Common App, a guide to it for 2019. I went through the whole thing, talked about my experiences with it, gave you guys all my advice that I've garnered over the years for both myself and with working with so many other people, helping them get into college like Columbia as well. And hopefully it should be a really good resource for you guys. You should go check it out for sure. And like I said in there, my videos on specifically the honors and activity sections of the Common App are going to be coming really soon. So be sure to subscribe to keep a lookout for those and hit the notifications bell to make sure you're notified when they come out. If you haven't watched part one yet of this tiny little video series, definitely go check it out. But other than that, let's get right into it. So I'll just get started by kind of giving an overview of what these list questions look like, starting with the very first. Please list the following 150 words for each question. The titles of the required readings from courses during the school year or summer that you enjoyed most in the past year. The titles of books read for pleasure that you enjoyed most in the past year. The titles of print and electronic publications you read regularly. And the titles of the films, concerts, shows, exhibits, lectures, and other entertainments you enjoyed most in the past year. So I'm going to lump the first two together. So list the titles of the required readings from the courses during the school year and summer that you enjoyed most over the past year and list the titles of the books you read for pleasure that you enjoyed most over the past year. So get ready for what's probably going to be the most pretentious sounding list you've ever heard in your life. So for the required readings I listed, and I have to refer to my supplement here, Kindred, Octavia Butler, Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, Ross Gay, Insert Boy, Dana Smith, Citizen, An American Lyric, Claudia Rankin, Decolonizing the Mind, The Politics of Language in African Literature, Nguge Wathiango, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, Tom Stoppard. Okay, that one was kind of a lie. I have just spent like the past month working on an essay with one of my clients about this book in particular and it absolutely destroyed me, but also reminded me of the love-hate relationship I have with that thing. But continuing on, Arcadia, Tom Stoppard, Waiting for Godot, Samuel Beckett, Pillfire, Vladimir Nabokov, The Waves, Virginia Woolf, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, James Joyce, Good Morning, Midnight, Jean Rhys, The Talented Mr. Ripley, Patricia Highsmith, Sketchbook, Washington Irving, Melville Unfolding, John Bryant, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, Our Man in Havana, Graham Greene, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, Edgar Allan Poe, The Country Wife, William Witcherly or Wikerly, something like that. I don't know, but it's okay because I just had to write it down, not actually say it. St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves, Karen Russell. A Theory of Justice, John Rawls. The Constitution of Liberty, F.A. Hayek. Leviathan, Thomas Hobbes. 
And finally, Democracy in America, Alexi de Tocqueville. And as for the non-required readings, I said, Our Men Do Not Belong to Us, Boris and Shire, Letters to a Young Poet, Rainer Maria Rilke, Jane Maggie Nelson, Saboy Ami, Cecilia Vicuña, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, Ocean Buam, Seam, Tarfia Faisula, When My Brother Was an Aztec, Natalie Diaz, The Best American Poetry 2015, Various, Way the Animals, Justin Torres, The Things They Carried, Tim O'Brien, Nature and Selected Essays, Ralph Waldo Emerson, The Importance of Being Earnest, Oscar Wilde, Sandman, Neil Gaiman, The Hate You Give, Angie Thomas, The Kite Runner, Khaled Hosseini, Lean In, Women, Work, and the Will to Lead, Charles Sandberg. Here we are, 44 Voices, Write, Jot, and Speak About Feminism for the Real World, Various, Finnegan of the Rock, Melina Marchetta, Fury of the Exiles, Melina Marchetta, Quindana of Shirin, Melina Marchetta, Six of Crows, Lee Bardugo, and Miss Bourne, Brandon Sanderson. Why did that feel like I was naming a bunch of candidates for an Academy Award? I don't know. I had to look up like 75% of the author's names, so if I mispronounced anything, I'm very sorry. I'm trying. First of all, as you can see, I included author names for all these books, which you don't actually have to do, but you can if you want in accordance with Columbia's website. Second, something that people always ask me is whether they should include descriptions of the books or explanations of why they like them. The answer to this is no. Columbia would actually rather you not do that as they say on their website. And this is really nice because it actually frees up a lot more space for you to talk about way more books. Since these were supposed to be readings from over the past year at the time, I included readings in the required section from the first semester of my senior year, both semesters of my junior year, and also the summer after my junior year when I had attended the Telluride Association summer program. So you can check out my playlist of videos on that specifically if you want to learn more. Something that I really do like about this list is I feel like it still pretty much holds up today and reflects my tastes in literature now just as much as it did back then. In addition to mostly like full-end books and novels and everything, there's also a lot of 20th and 21st century poetry and also some short stories, all of which I really like. There's also some really trippy modernist and postmodernist stuff like The Waves and Pale Fire, which I tried to juxtapose against more scholarly texts like Decolonizing the Mind and Democracy in America. There's even like Sandman by Neil Gaiman, which is actually a graphic novel series. And then there's also some young adult fantasy, which just as a lover of books, my whole life has been my bread and butter. The authors that I included are also quite diverse in terms of gender, age, ethnicity, political standpoints, and so on and so forth, which I do imagine Columbia may have liked to have seen, not just because it really reflected my tastes in literature, like I said, I really did have a strong emotional connection to each and every one of the texts I put on there, but also because it connects to Columbia's own values as an institution located in one of the most diverse cities in the world, and as a place that always tries to foster understanding of different viewpoints and analysis of those different viewpoints. So they could see that we had the same values. And if you notice, that goes back to the first two questions that I asked myself when I was answering the first question about what I value in a college and what I value as a human being, as myself. If you notice, the further we go through this, this is just going to be a recurring theme throughout all the questions. Those two questions are really just the foundation for pretty much all of my answers. Okay, so all of what I just said literally also applies to the next two questions, which are respectively, list the titles of the print, electronic publications, and websites you read regularly, and list the titles of the films, concerts, shows, exhibits, lectures, and other entertainments you enjoyed most in the past year. So I'm just going to read through my answers to these fairly quickly without much analysis, just because, like I said, everything still carries over and relates to these just as much as it does for the others. And also, I don't want this video to get insanely long. Let's go. So for print, electronic websites and publications, I put down Narrative Magazine, Cicada Magazine, Synesthesia Literary Journal, The Adroit Journal, Fisher Magazine, Mad Hatter's Review, Button Poetry, The Geeky Bond, The Body Is Not an Apology, Jezebel.com, this one website called Bitch Media, and then I felt really bad saying, you know, that word because I don't think it's a very kind word so I added a note that says while the title of this website includes a slur it does so to subvert and challenge the historical use of language reflecting how its own writings challenge patriarchal constructs as is the case for the two publications above it to include or not to include that is the question dot 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 
I actually left that in in my common application, so I think it worked out okay. Definitely, you guys can be quirky, you know? Like, it's okay to include some kind of curveball in there. You don't want to be cookie cutter. And then finally, the New York Times and The Onion were the last two that I listed. I would note really quickly that a lot of these publications that I put down are literary magazines, and some of them I had had the great good fortune to be published myself as a high school student, and I had included their names under the activity section of the Common App where I put down creative writing, and once again, be on the lookout for that activities video coming out, it will be very soon. But anyway, the idea is Columbia could see the names of these literary journals both here and in the activity section, and that was because I was really trying to create this cohesive narrative for who I was as an applicant and what I love to do, which was, well, write. So I think that this all really came together in really telling my story and helping me convey who I was and what I wanted to do and bring to Columbia's campus. Okay, so then for all the other stuff, I wrote that I had liked the Guggenheim Museum Special Exhibit, Jackson Pollock, Exploring Alchemy, the Guggenheim Special Exhibit, Anika Yee, Life is Cheap, the American Museum of Natural History Special Exhibit, Countdown to Zero, Defeating the Seas, the American Museum of Natural History Special Exhibit, The Titanosaur, Johnson Museum of Art, Empathy Academy, Social Practice and the Problem of Objects, Johnson Museum of Art, Leo Villarreal, Cosmos, Johnson Museum, The Best Way to Prepare Bananas, Fruits of the Soul from the Permanent Collection, Johnson Museum of Art, All for One and One for All, Portfolios from the Permanent Collection, Johnson Museum of Art, Robert Ruschenberg, Abstract Expressionist Painter, Deaf West's production of Spring Awakening, Kinky Boots, New Musical, and 13th, which was a documentary. Once again, a lot more artsy stuff, just continuing to cement this vision of me as an artistic applicant with a great love for culture, which was true then and is still very much true today. So I think that once again, it's just always very important to keep in mind that when you're cultivating this narrative of who you are and you're expressing it in the Columbia Writing Supplement or any other, you wanna make sure it's true to you. So there you guys have it. Those are my answers for the list questions and hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys to see someone who was thankfully accepted. I was extremely lucky and, and so fortunate and I really wanna pass that on to you guys. I always say this, I want to make the kind of content I was looking for when I was in all of your shoes, and this is it. I think really if you're going to come away from this video having learned anything, it's that it can be really nice to use your lists to add to the cohesive narrative of who you are as an applicant. Like, I talked about using literary magazines and all the kinds of books I like to read to sort of augment the vision of myself as a creative writing major, as someone who is really interested in the arts and culture and literature. And I really think that my lists did help in that regard. You definitely don't have to fuss about them. You really don't have to worry about them. They're not exactly the make or break part of your Columbia application, if you know what I mean. But it can be really nice to make them do work for you instead of just kind of sitting there. Like, you could take them or leave them. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please, please, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you're updated next time I post, which will be the honors and activity sections of the Common App. Not entirely sure which is coming first, but I do know that I'm going to walk you guys through both of those very shortly, and hopefully that will be really helpful. You guys can get an in-depth, up-close and personal look behind the scenes. It's going to be good. So definitely make sure to follow me on social media, like I said before, with Quora and Pinterest. That's where it's at, you guys. That's where the party is. Or for Pinterest, it's like brand new, so that's where the party's going to be. So it's like you guys are the very first. And I'll remember and love you always for it. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I will be back very soon. So I will see you guys next time. Bye. list the titles of the... So I'm going to lump the first two into one question here. List the required readings from... So I'm going to lump the first... List the titles of the required readings that you... And in addition to... Also actually some... So... Oh my god.